In today's digital age, where every device in our lives is connected, from our smartphones and TVs to cars and kitchen appliances, one thing has become clear. Control over your digital life is no longer just about convenience. It's about power. For over a decade, two operating systems have monopolized that power, Android and iOS. They've defined what your phone can do, how your data is handled, and which apps you have access to. They've shaped the very architecture of the mobile internet. It's a dominance so entrenched that most of the world assumed it could never be challenged. But something has been happening behind the scenes. Not in California, not in Seattle, but in Shenzhen, inside the walls of Huawei. Officials before the meeting said that, among other things, quote, Napoleon thought, we went too far with you, end quote. But the shift has been afoot negative. When U.S. sanctions cut Huawei off from critical American technologies, including Google's mobile services, most observers thought it was the end of Huawei's global smartphone ambitions. The world watched, expecting the company to fall. And for a moment, it did stumble. But what the world failed to see was what came next. The sanctions weren't a death blow. They were an ignition switch. Instead of folding under pressure, Huawei responded with one of the boldest and most ambitious technological independence efforts in modern history. They didn't settle for creating a forked version of Android. They went deeper. They reimagined what a modern operating system could be, not just for phones, but for an entire ecosystem of intelligent devices. They built Harmony OS. Harmony OS isn't a traditional mobile operating system. It's not meant to compete with Android or iOS on their terms. Because Huawei isn't just building an OS. They're building an entirely new digital foundation. At the core of Harmony OS is a microkernel architecture. A system that's designed from scratch to be lightweight, secure, modular, and highly scalable. This architecture allows Harmony OS to do something radically different from its Western counterparts. Operate seamlessly across a massive range of devices. The vision is this, your phone, your tablet, your TV, your smartwatch, your smart fridge, your car, they don't just connect, they collaborate. Harmony OS enables these devices to function not as isolated endpoints, but as one fluid intelligent network, a true super device, a unified system where hardware resources are shared across endpoints in real time and tasks can jump between devices effortlessly. Imagine taking a video call on your phone transferring it to your living room TV with a swipe, and routing the audio through your car speakers as you walk out the door. Without a second of lag, without repairing anything, without breaking the experience, this isn't theoretical, it's real. And it's live. While Apple has spent years perfecting the tight integration of its ecosystem, Harmony OS is already offering something deeper, cross danger resource sharing at a kernel level supported by what Huawei calls distributed technology. It breaks down the old boundaries between devices and creates something. At first there were doubts, because an OS, even a revolutionary one, is nothing without apps. Critics pointed to the absence of a mature app ecosystem as Harmony's Achilles heel. But that skepticism is evaporating quickly. Huawei has mobilized a growing army of developers, over 8 million by mid-2025 and they're not porting Android apps. They're building native Harmony OS applications using Huawei's development tools, including the multi-divide IDE and the ARC compiler, which translates code directly into efficient machine language. This compiler approach minimizes overhead and maximizes performance, giving developers the ability to build once and deploy across a vast hardware spectrum, something even Android has struggled to accomplish cleanly. The result is a developer experience that's increasingly attractive, particularly for those eager to build across phones, tablets, TVs, and even cars, all from one code base. In China, the results are already showing. On Huawei devices, Harmony OS has surpassed iOS in market share. That's not a projection, it's a fact. And it's happening in one of the most competitive and advanced mobile markets on Earth. While Android still dominates globally, Harmony OS is no longer a niche project or a plan B. It's a primary operating system for millions and growing fast. But Huawei's ambitions don't stop at China's borders. With Harmony OS now mature and expanding rapidly, the company has announced its intent to roll the platform out globally by 2026. 
This isn't a soft launch. It's a calculated and deliberate expansion strategy aimed at becoming the world's third major mobile operating system. The goal is to break the Android iOS duopoly that has gone unchallenged for more than a decade. There are challenges, of course, including ongoing geopolitical tensions and the perception gap in the West when it comes to trust and transparency around Chinese technology. But Huawei isn't backing away. Instead, they're doubling down on regions where they still hold significant brand equity. Southeast Asia, the Middle East, Latin America, and parts of Eastern Europe. These are markets where Harmony OS could gain ground quickly, especially with Huawei's aggressive integration of the OS across a wide range of hardware categories. Laptops running Harmony OS natively are already in development, signaling a broader move to build an entire software hardware stack independent of Western platforms. No Windows. No Android, no reliance on Google, Microsoft, or Qualcomm. This is the definition of digital sovereignty, and it's unfolding in real time. The implications are enormous. If Harmony OS gains traction beyond China, the world could be looking at a fundamental fracture in global tech. We would no longer have a universal set of standards, apps, and platforms. Instead, we'd see a digital bifurcation, a world split between Western tech stacks and Eastern alternatives. Different code bases, different rules, different philosophies on privacy, encryption, data ownership, and for users this could mean more choice but also more fragmentation. For developers it could mean learning to build from multiple global systems. For governments it raises new and urgent questions about digital infrastructure, cybersecurity, and the strategic importance of tech independence. Some analysts are already calling it a digital cold war, where platforms and ecosystems become geopolitical weapons. And in that war, Harmony OS is one of the most powerful assets China has. And it's not standing still. At the 2025 Huawei Developer Conference, Harmony OS 6 was revealed to the world. It brings lower latency, expanded AI capabilities, and an entirely new intelligent agent framework that lets users interact with their devices more intuitively and naturally than ever before. This isn't a series of feature updates. It's a step toward a truly intelligent network that adapts to the user, and not the other way around. The long-term vision is nothing short of staggering. Harmony OS isn't meant to just power your phone or your watch. It's meant to run everything, from the smart thermostat in your home to the autonomous systems managing traffic in your city. From personal healthcare devices to industrial automation networks, it's a single operating system designed to be the invisible layer connecting everything in your life. And it was born from crisis. It's a product of necessity, a response to pressure, a symbol of technological resilience, and now it's becoming a global movement. The question now isn't whether Harmony OS will matter. The question is how far it will go. Will it reshape the global operating system landscape? Will it force Android and iOS to adapt? Will it accelerate the creation of parallel tech worlds with different rules and ideologies? Or will it evolve into something even larger, a foundational pillar in the next phase of the digital age? Only time will tell. But what's clear now, perhaps more than ever before, is this. The world is no longer running on two operating systems. In the balance of power,